Hello E39 source. Houston here with the black E39 528, silver 328, and green 318. Today I will be showing you how to fix the rear parcel tray. As you can see, this is turned. Hopefully, the camera will focus. There. Hopefully, you can see that it's turned a light purpley bluish color. This one is quite bad. Um, let me just take you over here real quick and I'll show you the back of the 318. It also has faded at least as badly. The sky's reflecting as well. I'll show you on the inside. There, it's turned all purple and all. If you have one of these cars that's faded, you'll know it. And you, you'll know what I mean. This is all supposed to be black. If you look here under where the speaker covers would be, that's all black like it's supposed to be. Today I will be redoing both this rear parcel tray and the one in that car and also installing and painting the speaker covers for this car. This car is missing the speaker covers for some reason so I'll be getting some um, from parts car and sticking those in. So let's get started. To remove the rear parcel tray first thing you have to do is remove the seats. To do that, what you want to do is pull up on the front of the seat pan. There are two clips, one under here and one under here. Now this seat's actually already been lifted up, but what you do is you just grab underneath here and pull up on each side in kind of the middle of each of these seats. And what you're pulling up is from these spring clips that go around those connectors there. Don't worry, you won't break anything. You just pull it straight up. Um, you want to get your hand right under there. Just give it a good tug up, and it'll unclip. After that, you just slide it forwards. With the E39s, the seat buckles go through cutouts here and here. And so you'll need to, once you lift up the front of the seat, lift it up just over those carefully and slide it out. Um, there's no connectors at the back, so don't worry about those. After that... What you'll do is, now I've just done the rear parcel tray paint on my friend's 540 E39, but these seats I haven't taken out for a while. So let me just have a look on the 3 Series and see exactly where the bolts are on that. On the 5 Series, all there is is one bolt kind of down under here, and same on the other side. Then the seat lifts up, and then the top pulls out and then the seat back comes off. It's pretty simple. So on an E39, you're just looking for one bolt there and one bolt in the same place on the other side. Um, let me check and I'll get back on how to do the E36. Okay, I just remembered how to do it. It's been a little while since I've taken the seats out. What you do is just grab under the top here. There's no bolts at all at the bottom. Don't worry about those. What you do is you just grab up between the parcel tray and the top of the back seat. Get your hand in there, it's kind of tight. Maybe use a um, soft pry tool if you can. Try not to damage the rear parcel of the tray. Get your hand in there and just give it a tug out. Same basic kind of clips as on the seat pan. So you're just pulling it off there. After that, there's just these clips here that slide down so the seat will automatically come up and away from those. And then it's just the seat belts holding this in. You won't actually need to lift this right out of the car, or you shouldn't. Um, that can just kind of sit there. What you will, however, need to do, unless you want to mess around with taking the reels off and it gets kind of complicated, is take off these two bolts here and here to remove the seat belt, the lower part of these and the buckles, and then those can slide through this slot. And... You won't have to take off the reels or anything. That's the easiest way of doing it. So I will take those bolts off and get back to you. With those removed, the next step is to take off the headrests because they go through the rear parcel tray and lift up on these little clips here. I believe they just pop straight up and then the rear tray should just slide out. Now what you'll want to do with this here is it will, once you get the tray out a little bit, it'll be easier. But you'll, there'll be like little clips behind or something that'll pop out and then can be turned flat and slid back through the slot. And then you push the seat belt buckles and 
the bolt and stuff at the end through that slot and the personal tray should come right out. With the E39 that has the rear sunshade, that is slightly different. If I have time before it rains, I will get a clip of the difference is with that, but it's about raining and I'm kind of in a hurry, so I may not get to that. One more thing I forgot to mention was the C-pillar panels also need to be removed. Now if I can get the camera around here, what you do is you just, you want to make sure your hands are clean or else you'll get lots of dirt and stuff on here. These are already kind of dirty so I'm not too worried about this car. You get your hand under there and just gently pull it out and, sorry if the camera's not quite getting this, it's kind of awkward, and just gently pull out. And once all the clips are out, which I don't think this one is quite all the way off, something's still holding it there, there it goes, it'll just lift up and out. I'm not going to disconnect the lights, so that's probably a good idea. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then the partial tray should lift out. If you have an E39 with the folding rear sunshade, it is a slightly different removal process. I will do my best to explain it. It's not in the car. It's very similar to the 3 Series, but the, the biggest difference is that basically you have the electric rear sunshade, and that is quite heavy. If you look under here, this whole mechanism is fairly heavy, and there will be three bolts that you have to undo from the trunk of the car. One there. It's kind of centered in the screen now. One there, and one there. Those go down into the roof of the trunk of the car with, I believe, a 10 millimeter nut on each of them. Once you remove those, you use a screwdriver or something and push them up and forward in the little slots. And then, ideally have two people try to get your hands underneath the parcel tray from the front as far as you can. You know, grab here, just carefully and stuff. Try to lift it up and get that mechanism up so it'll slide forward. It's kind of tricky. Once you do it, and you understand how it works, it's way easier. All right, here we go. These are the three parcel trays I'm gonna be painting. This is the one from the silver car. This is the one from the green 318. And this one here is a spare one from a, I believe a 94 318 that was chopped into pieces as a parts car. These have been cut out I think for six by nine, something like that. It's not very good condition. It's got hair and stuff all over. It's pretty gross. The reason I'm painting that one is to try this. Now, the paint that I'm going to use for all of them is a Duplicolor vinyl and fabric paint. However, this is a gloss paint. When I painted my friend's 540, I used a matte paint, and that turned out good, and it looked like... I believe a factory paint job should look, or how they should have come from the factory. It restored it very nicely. I have not tried painting anything with the gloss black paint. So this one here is going to be the test for that. Now when I actually paint it, I'll move the others out of the way, or move it out of the way, so I don't get cross spray. But that's what that one's for, is a test to see what the difference with the gloss is, in case you only have access to gloss. These cans here are the matte. The cap is slightly different on the matte one. And this is what I used on the 540. Now the key when painting these is preparation and light coats. I'll show you the light coats when I'm painting it, but as far as preparation goes, anything that's left on the surface will still be on the surface after it's painted, except the paint will stick to that instead of to the surface. So any of this dust, dirt, hair, anything like that on it, when that gets moved, will leave speckles and lumps and stuff in the paint. So preparation is the key. 
Now, I'm not a professional painter, so I'm not sure what the best thing to use on fabric as far as cleaning goes is. What I'm going to do, and what I did on the 540, and it seemed to work, is very lightly f vacuum these, just to get off as much of the worst stuff as possible. Now, I'm going to use the vacuum on a low setting, because, as you might know or um, have seen, the fabric will tend to peel away like a um, roof lining does. So if I put the vacuum on a high suction, it might actually pull the fabric off the parcel tray, which would not be good. So I'm going to use a low setting just to try to pull some of the dust and stuff off. Then I'm going to wipe it down with a high pile cloth and turpentine. Now, I'm not sure whether to use methylated spirits or turpentine. I used turpentine last time. It's designed for cleaning and just use very light. You don't want to soften the glue under the fabric. I believe it'll be okay. It didn't seem to go badly in any way when I used it on the 540. So that's what I'm going to use now. Okay, these have all been cleaned up now. Now I've had to close the door almost all the way just to prevent wind coming in, blowing the paint around, and to help reduce some of the overspray. This one here is by far the cleanest. This is the one that is going in my daily driver, so I've taken more care cleaning it up. This one here is almost as clean, if not as clean, it's just a little bit more scuffed up. But, you know, I've wiped it down, vacuumed it. This one here, I've just done a quick clean. As I said, this one's just a test for the gloss paint. I'm not going to spend 10-15 minutes cleaning it up. To get started, we're going to grab our paint. Now, I picked this up just from the local auto store. It was $17 New Zealand. So, what's that, probably $13, $14 American, something like that. With the current exchange rate, something like that. It's not expensive. This is Duplicolor. I don't know if that's a good brand, bad brand. I've heard them do some advertising, so at least it's a name brand. But this is all they had. Um, let's see if we can find any more information on it. Um, I'm just going to read the back of the cans. I'll see if I can get it in camera as well. But it says basically just clean vinyl seats, dashboards, trim, wipe surface with Duplicolor prep wipe. I don't have that, so I just use turpentine. But as far as preparation, that's all it says. It says shake can vigorously for a full minute and paint. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've just finished painting. Now I need to apologize for the fan noise. I turned on the fan over there for airflow just to keep it from getting too uh, uh, misty in here and painting everything. And also everything's a mess. I've just been doing welding and stuff. Anyway, I just finished painting these and they're looking pretty good. I haven't done the gloss paint yet but with the matte paint, they've turned out pretty well. Now, if I can find, you know, it's actually showing up clearer in camera than it is in person. It's not quite as dramatic in person, but that patch there is under where the rear brake light goes. And you can see that's still blacker than the painted area. Now, maybe if I put on some more coats of paint, um, over here you can see where it's been painted it's actually a little bit darker but I don't want to I've given it a few coats I've been kind of just real painting it real real lightly almost continuously but by going back and forth this way I've avoided runs and stuff and there's enough dry time so it's not gonna run or anything but I don't want to build it up too thick on the fabric so it loses the texture so, for me, and because it's going to be covered, going from that to that, I'm happy. I just finished painting here, and with the gloss paint, 
it doesn't really look very glossy on the fabric. Between the matte and the gloss, there is a slight gloss difference, I guess. Like, just looking at it real closely, there is a slight difference, but on this fabric, there's very little difference. Now, when I painted these, I used very light coats, continuously moving, trying not to get lines and stuff. And if you look at here, because I'm not doing the whole thing, it was just a test, I didn't worry about getting lines. I put the can, instead of being so far off of it, I was more like four inches off of it, maybe, instead of six, eight, um, which is recommended. I was much closer on here. And the coverage, and I also painted it in, like, this has only had, like, over here, this is more of one coat, and this here is more two coats, but I painted it kind of like from here, that way, and back, very close to the fabric, pretty thick paint, and no runs that I can see at all, and it's held the paint really well. The gloss does seem to get better coverage than the matte. Now, I wasn't being as careful as this, so maybe having the can closer to the surface would give the matte just as good a coverage. But the gloss seems to have a little bit better coverage as far as, you know, how many coats are required. However, just looking at these in the morning, they're totally dry. The one from the 318, this one here, is actually slightly better than the one for the 328 that I did. I believe the reason for that was I, because the 328 is my daily driver, I took a little bit more care with it and actually did the paint a little bit lighter. And I, due to that, I just didn't have quite as good of coverage. If I kind of zoom out here, you can, it, it's easier to see in person, so hopefully the camera will pick it up correctly. But if you look here, it's kind of that dark patch. Hopefully you can see that. Is where is directly under the rear stoplight, and you can see that there's kind of a a lighter tinge where it was lighter before. This one here is better, but it still has kind of the same thing, mainly through kind of those areas there. If I can, I'll probably put a little bit more paint on there actually, and just see if I can fill that in. As far as texture, you can feel the paint. It is a stiffer, it feels um, almost like a, I guess a, maybe like a, not quite like a scratchy pad, but it is kind of stiff. It is definitely not a completely smooth texture compared to the factory, which feels kind of like a, um, it's still a little bit coarse but it's, I guess, feels more like a felt, whereas this feels more like a really, really soft um, scratch pad or something. It's like, it, it, and it'll, you know, if you rubbed it or something like that, it, it kind of begins to soften up. So it's not too bad, and like you probably aren't going to feel it. And the texture, the the texture itself, like when you see it there's no difference. Standing back, it doesn't look like you've just spray painted it. It's only if you feel it, it feels a little bit rougher than it did when it was purple. So, I'm pretty happy with it. And it is now installed. This has been um, about three weeks later. I ended up driving around without any parcel tray and with all the seats removed for about a week and just due to delays and stuff, it's taken me a while. Eventually I got it back in and I'm finally getting around to editing and realized I'm missing the end of the video. So here it is. As you can see, hopefully, it is black again. And now the seats look faded compared to the rear parcel tray. So that is something to think about if you do it. Just your seats might no longer match. Other than that, it looks excellent. 
the it's held up really well and I am very very happy with it and I would strongly recommend as a alternative to having the fabric replaced on it just painting it it seems to be good quality now if you can see it might not show up on the camera but it has like lots of lint and kind of stuff on it just from touching the seats when it was being put back in so for me I'm very happy with it and I would recommend it hopefully you can see what it looks like so each of these trays took approximately one can of paint so if you're doing a E39 I would recommend one and a half cans of paint possibly one a little bit more than one but for these one can of paint should do it if it's the same size can as the cans I got of course <laughs> so yep yeah. that's that thanks for watching